everybody, and welcome to another episode of Grace Coming to Chats, brought to you by Grace Coming to Church here in Philadelphia. I am your host, Kale Watt, here with my fantastic, fabulous, splendid, uh, serendipitous. I, I, thought you, I thought you would use another word that started with F. You had two of the rare, fantastic, fabulous. But uh, I, I gave up halfway through, but... No more alliteration. Yeah, no more alliteration. Pastor Doug, Pastor Doug, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Kayla, but... I recognize I have a divided mind. You have a divided mind? Yes. Um, How the, so? the Bible has convicted me. Oh, shoot. <laughs> this is what I was reading just now. <laughs> the unmarried, or sorry, um, the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his <laughs> wife, and his, and his interests are divided. Um, shoot. I am a divided. <laughs> I am a divided man. You're a divided man. What are you going to do about it, P-Doug? Well, the also says to you know remain as you are right oh, okay, and be faithful shoot. into the calling in which you are so mm. uh, sounds uh, sounds like first corinthians 7 if i've read first corinthians 7 but what are we talking about today p doug uh we're talking about singleness <laughs> <laughs> caleb very relevant topic yeah. uh, for half the hosting cast right now um <laughs> what are we talking about specifically in in singleness or with regards yeah. to singleness well so we've been in this series called uh living in a relationship talking about different relationships in our lives and mm. we had a message on dating and i recognize that you know in talking about dating people might feel this sort of um implication that like dating is and dating and, and specifically marriage is like necessary mm. right like that's the path i'm supposed to go um down um, but then that makes me wonder, well, then, like, if I'm not dating or married, then, therefore, something is wrong with me because I mm. haven't gotten to where I'm supposed to be. Mm. But I think, you know, when we read um, the Bible, you know, specifically here in 1 Corinthians 7, mm. singleness is not a problem that needs to be, like, fixed. And I want to talk about that a little bit more. Mm. Um, what is the role of singleness? Um, not just the gift, right, um, of singleness. Maybe, you know, some people are called to live a life of of pure celibacy, for, you know, to be given over to the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm also talking about this singleness even as a season um, mm -hmm. that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what does it mean for us to embrace that season rather than seeing it as a problem to be fixed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting topic because I feel like there are times in the church, uh, I'll say, like, even growing up, or maybe not explicitly stated, but, like, the sentiment is, like, well, maybe you're single because you haven't learned something yet mm -hmm. or like you haven't attained something yet, like yeah. spiritually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then God hasn't like moved you into the next phase of your life. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going, Pita? Yeah, Where are so we going? How, how do we I, I really want to talk about that a bit because yeah. um, like it can feel a lot of pressure being in the church because um, maybe not as much like our church GC because our church is like, mostly like singles, right? We mm. don't have many married couples, but typically you go to a, a church, there'll be a lot of married couples and actually it's usually more married couples than single people. And so mm. those who are single can be like, hey, like what's, what's something's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, how come there's these others who are like married? Um, you know, it seems like they've moved on in their lives, moved to the next stage. How come I'm like stuck mm. um, here? And that can be a thought that starts to sort of weigh on your heart, on people's hearts. And even in our church, I'm sure there's people who feel that, like people maybe in their later 20s, earlier 30s, and they're thinking to themselves, hey, like I'm looking on Facebook, I'm looking on Instagram, and I see people I know, like classmates, they seem to be already married, they seem to be moving the next stages, how come I feel left behind? Mm -hmm. um, and I want us to, yeah, just to drill into that and recognize that this is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Like singleness is not a problem that needs to be fixed in our lives. and. The problem with a lot of the dialogue around that is when people come up to say like a married couple and explain um, and share, hey, like I'm struggling right now. I uh, feel a little lonely. I'm single. You know, too often the response of married couples is, oh, well, what about so-and-so? <laughs> How about like this person? You know, you know what? And it's coming from like a good heart, right? Obviously yeah, they yeah. want to help, but you're just feeding into that same attitude. Hmm. that singleness is a problem to be fixed because you're offering solutions to a problem, right? Hmm. So and so, hey, I can match you with this and that person. Um, and I think that is actually not the right attitude. Obviously, we want to help, right? I, I'm all for like, you know, helping people to meet and things like that, right? I'm all for, you know, setting people up, you know, when possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's always our first reaction to someone who's like feeling lonely, then I think we're just really reinforcing the attitude. Hey, mm -hmm. your loneliness, your singleness, it's a problem. We got to fix it. Hmm. And so these are the solutions. And like I said, that just makes it so much worse for people, hmm. for single people who are feeling that because um, now they just feel like overwhelmed. 
Yeah. So then, what are the merits of of being single? Yeah. Right, right. Um, well, I think it's pretty clear, actually. Let me read um, from First Corinthians. An undivided mind. <laughs> undivided. <yeah. laughs> you know, this is what Paul says. I want you to be free from anxieties. Um, the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. Hmm. Um, and the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. Um, I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Um, I really like that last part, to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, too often, like I said, when we feel lonely, um, when we feel like singleness is a problem in our lives, mm -hmm. it, loses, it takes our minds off the Lord and the undivided devotion that singleness actually allows us to have. Mm -hmm. Like singleness is a special season um, in our lives. And it's a season actually that's longer than it used to be, right? It used to be. Um, that people would get married much younger, right? You would basically mm -hmm. leave your home of your parents once you got like married. Um, and so, you know, Paul is really speaking to people who maybe didn't get married, right? Um, but now we actually have a season of singleness a lot of people go through. That could be um, 10 plus years. And But mm -hmm. I think it's a special season that the Lord gives um, for us to have an undivided devotion to him. Like mm -hmm. there's an intimacy with the Lord that we can enjoy um, in a way that will be harder if we get married. Um, because like even Paul says, right, there's marital obligations that come, right? There's stresses involved in marriage. Right? You know, I, I, love, I'm, I love my wife so much. Right? I, I, enjoy, I enjoy like the marriage that we have. Hmm. Um, but obviously there's some there's stresses that come, you know? Hmm. And that's just the reality of life. That's the reality of marriage. There's stresses that come with it. Um, and so singleness is actually a season that you, where you can really just enjoy the devotion of the Lord. You can enjoy his presence in a way that will be harder um, later on. And so I think, mm -hmm. you know, rather than seeing singleness as like a curse or a problem, we need to learn to see it as a gift mm -hmm. that God has given um, to us. It's a gift, uh, you know, to really just know him and to know the goodness of our Lord. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously that doesn't address, I know people, some people really feel a deep loneliness and saying this is just like platitudes, maybe just like platitudes to them, but really mm -hmm. truthfully, like devote, um, singleness is a gift that God, that God has given um, to just know him in a deep way, to be wholly undivided in your devotion toward him. Hmm. I, I find that, maybe, I agree with that thought, but it feels a little bit interesting to me because like one of the, maybe, maybe this is like just the culture, church culture that I, mm -hmm. I've been around, right? Um, but like very frequently you hear the, like, I feel like I've heard the phrase like pursue marriage. Mm -hmm. Right. Or like pursue marriage through the season of singleness. Mm -hmm. right? But nobody's ever like pursue singleness. Mm -hmm. Right. If you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Right. So like it, it and I, I don't know if what I'm really trying to get at here. Right. But it almost feels like marriage relationships are something that you work towards as and singleness is something that's just given to you because that's a, like a state. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like how how like I, I don't know. Is, do you do you feel like that's like an appropriate attitude? Do you feel like there's like or to like being like, no, I, I am choosing to be single or like I'm pursuing this for this time period, right? Aside from the whole celibacy mm -hmm. um, discussion, right? Is there, is there merit to doing something like that? Or? Uh, well, I wouldn't say we work. It's not like we're single and we're working towards marriage. I would say sure. that there's, we just have seasons of our life. Sure. And we want to understand what the, our purpose in that season is. Um, mm -hmm. Like the season of singleness is a season where the Lord invites us to know him deeply and intimately. The season where he actually allows us to be wholly undivided, even in our pursuit of him in the way we serve, right? Singleness mm -hmm. can be a season where we learn how to be a part of the church, how to serve the church, what our giftings and, you know, it, what our giftings and our, and our, and like our role in the church is in a way that will be harder when we're married, especially when you have kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, the more that we can use our singleness to understand ourselves and our role under the Lord and our role in the church, the better our families and our marriage will be in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we want to pursue singleness as we're in this season, enjoy this season we're in, and really maximize it, right? It's not a season we want to rush through or think a problem that we have to get through. But on the flip side, I don't want us to think that marriage is something we work towards, right? I'm not saying you have to like, you have to understand yourself and your role. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I, I don't understand all my giftings yet. Like, no, yeah. you're, there's a lifelong learning that's, in, that's happening. But there is something special about singleness and the ability for us to really understand who we are before the Lord, to know him in an intimate way and understand our purpose in the church as well mm -hmm. and our giftings. 
and such because like I said, we're undivided um, in this season. So it's a gift. Mm-hmm. It's a season the Lord gives us. But you know, for many people, for most people really, he takes us out of that season mm-hmm. at some point in marriage. And we just gotta recognize, all right, it's a new season. And with new seasons, there's different um, different sort of obligations and duties, different um, even purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've talked about in a previous podcast about the idea of calling in family. Once you're married, mm-hmm. there's a calling, right? Mm-hmm. And in, the, in a new season, there's a new calling. Mm-hmm. Um, and that calling is to love and to serve um, your family. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, there's different seasons and because I recognize what season we're in and focus on just really being good, like is honoring that season that the Lord has given us. Mm. So then what would you say to that person who is saying, I am lonely, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe of varying uh, degrees, right? Yeah. Actually, I wanted to read something that someone else wrote to me on um, this. I, I remember talking to someone um, who was single and they they shared with me like encouragement that they received that they felt like was really necessary for them. Mm-hmm. Um, because that person was, had been, was expressing that it felt like every time they talked to anyone within the church about singleness, you know, especially like friends who were married, um, their initial thought was what I said before. They'd be like, oh, how about so-and-so or this person? I can be, you know what I mean? But that, like I said, wasn't helping this person. And so they, they told me that like, you know, the one thing that really encouraged them was this. It says, if relationships keep getting blocked, it must mean that God still has a lot in store for you in your single years. And that's awesome and a gift. Just keep faithfully praying and faithfully serving with joy, whether it's in a co- co-ed or single gender setting. Only God can set you up with someone as the ultimate matchmaker. You're not running out of time. God just wants to spend more time with you while you're single. Mm. And that really like struck me. It's like, that's awesome. Right? No one ever says that mm. to someone who is still single. Like, that's awesome. Mm. Um, they always say, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, let me like, have you, you know, have you tried the apps yet? Have you yeah. tried this, that, whatever, right? <laughs> we go into problem solving mode. Uh-huh. Um, never do you ever hear someone say, no, that's awesome. Like God has mm. so much more in store for you to know him, like, you know, his love. But I think we need to come to that understanding that like, if you're lonely, like, like seek the Lord, like <laughs> he's the only one that, you know, he wants to, he wants to know you more in this season. He's, he's calling you. That's why he's keeping you in this season. He's calling you to come closer to him. Um, Because the truth is, if we're feeling lonely, a relationship is not going to fix that. Sure. Uh, maybe it will for a short time. And we'll, we'll have this like brief honeymoon period. And, but the problem is then we'll start to see that person as the answer to all of our our problems. And that person will fail us one day and then we'll be even worse. Like, oh, they, that person's broken. They didn't <laughs> help me. You know. And we, but the Lord wants us to find our content, our contentedness purely in him. And so mm-hmm. it, for those who are still single, like I, just like that person said, like, that's awesome. Hmm. enjoy this season and and really see that the Lord is calling you to know him more and more, to know him in a deeply intimate way. Hmm. How do you feel like God then reveals himself differently in singleness versus in marriage, in a relationship? Because I feel like I've heard, right, like maybe a sentiment from like some of my single friends, like, oh, I want to get married. Like, how could this not be a good thing? Because then I'll understand like, Oh, how God relates to us as his bride or like something mm-hmm. like that, right? Like we'll understand that analogy better, right? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't oh, yeah. know. It's like a, yeah. you know, but it's like, you know, there, there's like different, uh-huh. I, uh, I guess the point is that there's different facets, right? To understanding yeah. God's love and, and stuff like that in, in marriage than it is in singleness. So how do you see that play out in singleness? Like what what's special about singleness? The special, the, the special, the, what's special about singleness is the undivided nature of it. Okay. You can see who you are before the Lord just and just be with him mm. to know that you are a child before him mm. you know singleness is a season to know that you are loved beyond measure you have everything you need mm. in your savior right mm. marriage is not we don't go to marriage because we lack right we go to marriage because we there's like god has called us into it um because it's it, but in singleness we find that we are fully who we, we are fully great we have all we need there's the contentedness we have in jesus alone and i think mm. that's like the true gift of singleness is finding that we have everything, absolutely everything we need in him. We don't need another person. You know, we don't need to be married, right? Mm. Um, that's not a, it's not a need within us. It's, mm. it's, it's a gift, right? Marriage is a gift, just like singleness is a gift. But mm. when we feel like we need that other person, we need that marriage, like, no, like you're not gonna be satisfied then. What we need is the Lord. Uh, we have everything we need in him. Mm. And so that's, well, that's, that's the true gift of singleness is the way that we can just be undivided before the Lord mm. and to know that we are loved beyond measure. 
mm. that any future husband or wife will not love us <laughs> in that same way, you know, yeah. they won't. Um, we need to know the love of our father who mm. cares so much, right? so much about you. Wait, actually that, that brings me to like a, maybe like more curious question where it's like, how does dating fit into this, mm-hmm. right? Because like, I think there's a sense like when I read the Bible, well, obviously because dating is not in the Bible, mm-hmm. right? But there's a sense in which you're you're single until you get married. Yeah. Right. The Bible doesn't treat you as not single. Yeah. Right. But we have this like weird limit. Just just say if you're dating, you're still single. But just to be clear, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, are you single? No, I'm dating. No, no, you're single. Yeah. (laughs) But there, but at least uh, I guess as you're pointing out too, right? Like in our culture, like there's like this weird liminal state where when when you're dating, you're not treated as like, I I like the word liminal. I don't know why. (laughs) But there's like this weird state where you're like, not entirely single. You're treated as not entirely single, but also you're not not mm-hmm. single. Yeah. Right. So how does that fit into like this sort of like idea of singleness as well? So yeah, I mean, dating is about exploring the potential of compatibility for marriage, um, mm-hmm. but also like I mentioned, you know, you have fun through it and you mature through it. So there's a mm-hmm. there's a maturing maturing process as well, mm-hmm. and there's also a discovery process because just because you're dating doesn't mean you're confident that you want to be married. Maybe mm-hmm. the dating will show you that. God has called you singleness, like for a life of singleness, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe even a longer, maybe he's called even a longer season. So I think dating fits in because it helps you to see whether God is calling you into marriage or not mm. um, in that season, right? It's sort of a way, it's sort of like a test, I guess you will. It's like a test to see, like, is God calling me out of the season of singleness into marriage or is he calling me to remain in it? And I would say mm. that's how we sort of see it in this, in this sort of framework that we've been talking about here. Um, but I mean, I would refer back to my talk on dating just for the fullness, <laughs> fullness of it, right? And yeah, yeah, right, yeah. how what should be your attitude toward dating and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, in the framework of what we're talking about now, I would say that dating is a way to see whether God is calling us mm. out of singleness. But while you're dating, you are still single, and we should be seeking to like have an undivided heart for the Lord, right? Don't mm-hmm. like I mentioned, you know, tapping into my other message, but don't treat your dating relationship as a marriage where you're like right. so involved because that's not healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Dating is not supposed to be like, you know, marriage light, right? It's more supposed to be like ex- exploration, um, mm-hmm. a season of exploration. Um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but when, what it boils down to is that dating is a way to see like, is the Lord calling me out of singleness mm-hmm. or not? Actually, that that kind of answers my next question too, which mm-hmm. was like, how do you know when the season's over? Yeah. Right. Because there's like always a sense, or I guess like two, two attitudes that um, I feel like I've, either felt or like heard is like yeah one just find a contentment right and then just like stay here and then you know, whatever but then there's like almost like a sense that that then leads to oh i need to stay here because i'm not good enough yet yeah i haven't you know so like i, I guess yeah well like, i mean personally maybe, maybe i have a little bit answers. i i, I want to yeah. i always push back against some people's attitudes it's like oh i'm not mature enough to be married yet because uh-huh. you know ultimately or i haven't figured out my life enough yet because sometimes it's actually better to mature and to figure stuff out together in the context of marriage, right? Um, but obviously different circumstances, you know, someone could be wildly immature and they shouldn't be married, right? Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of this just comes down to f- seeking wisdom and counsel. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, you know, anyone who's dating should really have another couple, whether they've been dating longer or part- especially a married couple who can sort of like walk with them and provide wisdom. Um, people are dating should seek wisdom from, you know, their pastors, from people in the church, right? Mm-hmm. Um, leaders. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that that's really what we need is we need wisdom to surround us, understand this. We can't do it alone. Mm. It's not something we can figure out. But the truth yeah. is, you will not know for sure that God is calling you out until you are married. And then <laughs> once you're married, he has, right? He has <laughs> called you out definitively. Yeah. There will always be a sense of, am I sure, am I sure? But we have confidence as we seek counsel mm. from others, as we seek wisdom from the Lord. Mm. Yeah. I like that thought. I like that. I feel like that was a nice conclusion mm. to our discussion, P Doug. Yeah. Unless you have other concluding thoughts. No, I think that's that's good. Well, fantastic. What a riveting discussion. Yeah. For a church full of mostly mostly single people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we don't have very many married couples. Yeah, and not, as not we just many. said, dating couples. Not, not don't many count. Yet, but yeah, yet, yeah. Yet. But yeah. again, it's not a problem to be fixed. Right? right. Right. But that does make this a very relevant topic. Mm-hmm. But you have been listening to Grace Coming to Chats brought to you by Chris coming to church here in Philadelphia. Why did I almost forget our church? I know. Name I was again? Like, what are you going to say there? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> if you're new here, go check us out at philly.gracecoming.net and join us on Sundays for our new sermon series on stewardship, 
for yes this upcoming season i presume yeah up until easter up until easter fantastic and join us on myerson or online or on youtube and we will see you next time <laughs>